Hey, what's up, guys? You're listening to the It Takes a Village podcast. I'm Ashley, your host. This is where the struggles are real, the callings are heavy, the kids are sticky. We come together because it takes a village, and this is your tribe. Hey guys, thanks for listening. Today I'm hanging out with Amy Marks from Enriching Kids, which is all about educating preteens on the skills necessary to be successful, confident, and creative individuals. Uh, She has classes such as Kids Home Alone, Better Babysitters, and Empowering Girls with Confidence. So everybody, welcome Amy to the show. Thanks, Amy, for hanging out with us. Thanks, Ashley, for having me. Okay, so I'm really interested in this topic because my kids are eight and five right now. And this has, so this hasn't really been on my radar, but I, as I was thinking of this interview, I was thinking of back when I was a kid where I don't even think my mom questioned, like, if I was ready to be home alone or like, you know, there was no preparation for me. It was just like, you can walk to school now. You are now able to be home alone. (laughs) Exactly. Yes. And in our earlier years too, um, safety wasn't such a big topic. It just was kind of something you did. Yeah. Um, so now I feel like the trajectory or like the emotions about leaving your kids at home has changed. Do you notice that parents are more hesitant to even think about leaving their kids at home now? Um, yes and no. Yes, because just because of the safety issues and all the craziness going on in the world. Yeah. And no, because uh, some parents have to because yeah. they're working or they have to bring siblings to an event or and and the child in question is being um you know doesn't want to go anymore they just want to be home alone so that's usually how the conversation starts um you know the child that is about the right age nine to twelve years old is starting to resist going places yeah (laughs) so that's when the conversation (laughs) starts yeah i can completely relate to that so Okay, as a parent, I was trying to think, I'm like, I don't even know if there's an age, I like a, a law by age at which kids can stay home alone, or how do we know when we should start thinking about preparing our kids, um, even thinking about it, um, you know, digesting it, like when is, when is the right time for a mom to start realizing this is, we're nearing towards this time in, in our kid's life? Well... The normal age is about 9 to 12, and as far as the legal uh, age, mm-hmm. it's, it kind of depends on what the parents feel um, when the child is mature enough to take on that responsibility. There are three states, though, that have said, no, you cannot leave your child home alone until a certain age, and those three states are Maryland, Illinois, and Oregon. Yeah. Um, I've heard some uh, conversations going on for Illinois that they're thinking about changing that, so uh, it's just best to always kind of ask, you know, your police department or kind of view it online to see, you know, if anything has been changed in those three states. But other than that, um, the police departments feel like it is really best left to the parents because every child matures a little differently at different ages. Mm-hmm. So what are some of the signs that we need to see? and? And also, I guess this would intertwine with uh, the classes that you have available, which I thought was was a really awesome resource to have. How do you guys prepare children to be ready? Well, we have a class for Kids Home Alone. Um, It's actually, we teach this class two ways. We teach it on site and then also um, online live, which I'm really proud of because we can offer it to anybody all over the world. And it's actually with a live teacher Um, and everybody can go to my website if you're interested in that, those particular, um, or in that particular class, uh, the way we teach it online. Um, and so your question was, what do we teach? We teach them, we do it in a fun format. Uh, when we do it online, it's very, um, individual. We only allow up to five or six kids. And so we really get to know the kids ahead of time to make sure that we're teaching, kind of at their level and um, what their parents want us to, you know, focus on, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, So how do we know if they're ready? Well, like I said earlier, if they express an interest in staying home alone, that's kind of a good way to start. If your child is really worried about that and they really don't want to, in fact, I had a 
a parent call me to register their child for a home alone class and then he called me back a few hours later and said that the child was having a meltdown because they really didn't want to be home alone yet Aww. so that's <laughs> he canceled the class for them and um you know the child's just not ready so yeah. if like i said if your child is really um, resistant to going with you to the grocery store or taking a younger sibling somewhere mm -hmm. that's a good sign that they could be ready um, also, if they can just simply make a simple meal like, you know, peanut butter and jelly and potato chips or um, a turkey sandwich, are they willing and able to do those um, simple tasks if you're gone for longer than an hour or two and they need to make themselves a meal? Yeah. Um, do they make good decisions? Are they going to turn down a play date um, knowing that they have homework to do? Mm. So that's kind of another good sign. So like I said, every child is an individual and matures at different rates. And just because they're 12 years old doesn't mean that they're, um, you know, able to do these things. But a nine-year-old, you know, sometimes just feels more adequate and able to take on those challenges. So um, that's why the states usually just leave it up to the parents. So... Yeah. You know, other things to think about, do they do some simple chores when they're asked? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, would they know how to handle a power outage if that should happen? Would mm. they freak out or would they kind of know to take the steps to turn flashlights on and, you know, um, maybe call a parent if they have a cell phone just to let them know what's going on. So um, so there's other things as well. I could go on and on if you'd like me to. <laughs> No, I think these are these are really good tips. But from all the things that you're saying, I also feel like there's a responsibility as a parent to prepare the home to make it successful when they are home alone. So there's like parts that they're responsible for, but I feel like there's things that I would be responsible for to make it successful for them to be home alone. Right. And actually, um, in our class, we have a parent guide. So we help the family, not just the parents and that one child, but the mm -hmm. family talk about things that maybe they haven't really talked about before, like a fire escape plan, Yeah. Um, which includes how would they get out of the house and then where would they meet or go mm -hmm. yeah. you know, to a safe place. So we do um, have that as part of the class just to make sure the whole family is on board and the parents and child really have a discussion about many things you know, regarding safety in their home. And I think now a lot of us don't even have landlines, so we would it, our kids would have to be at the age where we could leave a phone with them, or they would be able to use you know a, a phone or a smartphone, whatever kind of phone that we would leave behind. There would need to be something there. Right, and I really I'm glad you brought that up because that's really important. In fact, I kind of advocate that par that parents do give their kids a phone. Uh, not just when being home alone, but getting off the bus, if they're going to be coming home to an empty house, um, just for safety reasons. Um, and, you know, the kids absolutely have to have a means of communication to the outside world if they're home alone. They have to have their own cell phone or a parent's cell phone or a home phone. Also, I was curious how you found yourself in the space of teaching kids these skills that they need Um the, the babysitter one, I think that is really a really good resource along with this home alone um, class because just, again, like I said, when I grew up, you know, it was just like you become the age where you're old enough, where your parents feel you're old enough to watch another child. And so you just do. And, you know, <laughs> there's no there's no training. Exactly. Um, actually, I'm a nurse. And okay. I always loved teaching when I was a nurse. Mm -hmm. um, and I taught a lot of CPR classes. I was a cardiac nurse and I really loved teaching, but I always also always loved kids. Mm. So, um, so somebody I was working with at the time asked me if I would be willing to put a babysitting class together because she was helping me teach our CPR classes. And I said, Hmm, okay, that yeah. sounds like fun. So I got a bunch of, um, other nurses together who were also parents and a few teachers and we kind of got together as a group and created this class called better babysitters that was 26 years ago and we took it to this um friends girl scout troop and they actually loved it mm. and i said to myself oh my gosh i think i found something here because i love teaching them 
I love being creative and putting this whole class together. And we kind of took that class on the road. But what we were finding is a lot of younger kids wanted to take the class, even though they weren't quite ready to babysit. But the parents wanted them to have the safety information. So um, about 20 years ago, we divided the class to really just kids who are interested in babysitting and kids who just wanted the home alone information. Mm. And uh, the classes have just taken off. We, we're in the Cincinnati, Dayton, Columbus area. Um, and we're, I've kind of lost count, we're 90 plus schools, rec centers all over the area. Awesome. But then we're doing the um, Home Alone class online live. And Better Babysitters is, is getting there. We're working on it. Um, so I'm really excited about kind of the trajectory of how things are going. So there's more people that can take advantage of our classes around the globe. Yeah, so I think that, that is amazing. And it's, and it's so empowering, I'm sure to these kids, you know, who are going to be put in these situations regardless, you know, you have the oldest sibling who knows, you know, the mom has been telling them, you know, for years that, you know, you're going to be the babysitter or, you know, and so, um, I feel like them having the skills makes them feel confident in their ability to handle the situations as they arise or just being home alone with these, you know, their siblings as well. Right. And, and a lot of parents have told us that they've, um, once they kind of get into those classes that we talk about things they never really thought about. Mm -hmm. And so I'm proud of the fact that we're kind of filling in the, in the blanks or the holes or, for, you know, the parents do the best they can to kind of educate their kids about the what ifs. Right. But because we've been doing it so long, we kind of um, have figured out those what ifs. Yeah. And actually, they came from the kids themselves when they would ask questions. And so we kind of included those um, as we kind of redid the classes along the way. So, um, so it wasn't just me, you know, um, developing the class. It was the kids and the parents as well helping us along the way. Yeah. What has been, have you heard any stories of like the impact that the class has made on any of the uh, people who have been a part of your classes? Yes. I mean, I have many better babysitter parents reaching out to tell me that their kids um, are very busy and they're very popular. <laughs> so <laughs> from the parents um, who hire these better babysitters um, are very uh, just fascinated by the fact of how much they know and the mm. questions they ask. And as far as the home alone kids, um, a lot of people have told me that their kids feel a lot more confident after those classes because um, there's really, you know, a lot of kids dream up things that can they be, can, can be afraid of. Right, yeah. Especially all the um, home alone movie <laughs> out yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. But we talk about what's realistic and what's not. And the other thing that we do is we have the police and fire department come and they really help the kids feel more com confident, I'm sorry, com comfortable and confident about, you know, who they can call. And it's really okay to call them um, if something out of the ordinary is happening. And so that gives the kids even more confidence that um, they're not going to get in trouble for calling if something is not quite right. You yeah. Know? Yeah, I think that's that's a really good idea because I'm I think that from a parent's perspective, you know, we're so scared about the staying home situation because you see in the news, you know, so many parents leave their kids at home and then something happens and they end up getting in trouble for leaving their kids at home and right. or and then on the flip side, um, there I don't remember what it was, but it was like the realization that most or not most kids but there are some kids who are actually like when a situation arises they are scared to go to the police officer or, you know like they don't know what to do um when a police officer comes to their door you know they're too scared to answer it and and um uh, so having that knowledge and relationship is really good yeah and we talk about calling 911 and we talk about is the person at the front door really the police officer mm -hmm. i mean not to yeah we don't scare kids at all. We just educate them as to, you know, what you can do to make sure. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, is that 99% of the time when they're home alone or they're babysitting, nothing, you know, horrible is going to happen when it comes to kidnapping or 
uh, a fire or and we talk about prevention a lot too Mm -hmm. you know are your doors locked Mm -hmm. do you have a smoke detector in your house or does does the person that you're babysitting for have all these safety features and we we really focus more on the prevention part than um the what ifs um just because you know, 99% of the time, nothing out of the ordinary is going to happen. Right. So that helps the kids feel more reassured and confident, too, because you just have to put those um, scary thoughts kind of like, okay, that's not really realistic. Nobody's going to be coming to the door with, um, you know, a gun or trying to take you. It's, it's just, you know, very, very, very unlikely that it will ever happen. Right, right. <laughs> Um, so I am curious, though, since you, I, you know, you had mentioned that you did classes all over the nation and stuff. How does a school get uh, can, affiliated with you? How do they work with you? How do parents find you and work with you? How do, how can we create those relationships? Because I'm thinking, oh my gosh, every every school needs this program. Thank you. Um, right now, we're in the Ohio area. Mm-hmm. Um, when we do our on-site classes. And eventually, um, I would like to obviously just do um, the online live webinars Mm -hmm. for everyone. But as far as the schools, we actually go to schools in our area right now. So um, if if someone, you know, in a different city, um, I've considered, you know, hiring people that would be able to teach. Um, So that's a little far out for us, but um, I just wanted to maybe just talk about the online live or the webinars that we're developing right now yeah. that are interactive. You yeah. Know? Oh man. One day though. One day. <laughs> one day. Yeah. I, that's always been my dream is to take it across the country. So yeah, I think it would be amazing. Um, you know, just having that resource because they're, like you said, at the very beginning, there are so many kids who like, they don't, they don't have a choice. This will be them when they're 12 right. or 13 and, um, right. Yeah. The families, unfortunately, yeah. have to oh, give goodness. their oldest child that responsibility mm-hmm. or their only child because, you know, economically speaking, they have to leave them home alone or leave them home yeah. alone with their siblings because mm-hmm. they have to go to work or, um, and that's the reality and we understand that. So it's really important to educate them um, to make sure that's everyone is safe. Mm-hmm. So for moms who are listening, what is maybe a conversation that they should have or think about having, or what is like one actionable thing that they can do to prepare their child? Maybe it's, let's say their child is in like the 10 to 12 year old range. What is maybe like the one thing that you think that we should focus on right now with them? For the Home Alone class? Yes. Um, The one thing is um, just prevention of anything happening, Um, you know, making sure that the child is interested and ready and making sure that the house is safe, you know, do all the doors lock or all the windows able to open and close. Um, You know, we talk about escape routes routes for fires, Mm -hmm. but sometimes parents don't realize that the window in the family room hasn't opened in 25 years and it's, you know, that kind of thing. Um, Do they have working smoke detectors in their house? Um, Do you have a fully stocked first aid kit? So that would probably be the focus is just prevention and knowing who to call if something out of the ordinary should happen. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. You have so many good points. Right now I'm thinking of it would be a good idea to have your child practice opening a window before you leave them out. Absolutely. And that's, once again, part of our class. We, um, And that's also part of the discussion with the parents. Um, we make sure that they kind of have gone through all these things in the house. Um, we just recently bought a house well four years ago, mm-hmm. and I did it myself when we first moved in. And there were several windows that did not open easily because when we bought the house, it was 22 years old. So, yeah, um, things that that's the kind of thing that we really help parents focus on is um, things that they really haven't thought about yet or before or. Um, does your child know how to do the self heimlich maneuver? That's another thing mm. that we talk about. Um, and we talk about prevention. You're not going to put 
10 grapes in your mouth right. at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope not. <laughs> right. Or are you allowed to eat when you're home alone? Mm. So parents yeah. have a lot of, um, you know, education when it comes to making sure that they're both on the same page to be aware that um, it's important not to put, you know, 25 marshmallows in your mouth or whatever. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I think my only rule, at, like growing up um, when I was home alone, was that I couldn't use the stove. But but one thing that I remember though is that I always had the front door open, like because all we lived right across from my, our junior high, and so all my friends would you know stop by and have a snack with me and you know or whatever. And I was like, maybe that wasn't a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's it's just once again another conversation yeah. between kids and the child because. You know, that's something they've always done is they've always had friends over. Yeah. But it might be different when the parent is not there. Mm -hmm. um, and it might not be your child causing the issue. It could be other yeah, that's true. the other kids mm -hmm. causing an issue knowing there's not a parent there. Mm -hmm. So it's important to um, have that conversation, you know, depending on maybe this friend is over all the time and you trust this other friend versus mm -hmm. a friend that they don't know as well. Um, coming when they're home alone. So there's just a lot of discussion that needs to happen between mm -hmm. the parent and child about restrictions, expectations. Um, we always ask that question to the kids, you know, what do your parents expect of you? And what we want them to say is, you know, to use good judgment, to be respected, you know, to respect the house and to respect the rules. Mm -hmm. And they also come up with house rules um, as a family when they're home alone, you know, what, what are the expectations? So everybody's kind of clear on the yeah. rules. These are all good. Um, I'm just thinking about all the things that I wasn't prepared for. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, these are amazing tips. Um, okay. So since we can do these classes online, um, yes. Where can people find these classes for their children if they're listening and they know that they're about to be in this realm and they're going to need your help? Well, um, they can go to our website. It is um, enrichingkids.com, and there's a Z at the end of kids instead of an S. So it's E-N-R-I-C-H-I-N-G-K-I-D-Z, as in zebra, dot com. And... Um, I guess if it's outside of the Ohio area, it would need to be the Kids Home Alone online live class. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's actually a teacher sitting there. It's not a webinar. So um, we're doing webinars in the future, but right now it's online live. And I think, and parents are welcome to sit in. So I know that, you know, that might sound a little scary, like who is your kid in front of the computer with, but um, all of our teachers are background checked and, um, you know, Mm -hmm. normal moms themselves who yeah. just want to help other kids learn how to be home alone safely. So it's it's been um, very popular, and I'm really excited about it because I feel like it can really reach kids, you know, outside of Ohio. So yeah. I think, I mean, I think it's, I'm on board. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I, before we end this conversation, which I mean, I feel like you've given us so many good tips, and I hope that all the moms listening have written your information down because we're going to need it. Most of us are going to need it eventually someday because um, I know we're all telling our oldest, okay, can't wait till you babysit. <laughs> or, you know, um, but as you know, as moms, which this podcast is all about moms, it, it's so hard for us to... Um, you know, we're thinking about all these things, like we're thinking about preparing our kids for, for example, staying at home alone. We're trying to do all these things and we're pouring out and we're pouring out for our family, but we don't really um, remember to take care of us sometimes. So I wanted to ask you, um, which I ask all the other guests on the show, is what is your favorite form of self-care or what is a way that you make time to, like what gives you life or joy? What fills you up? Well, there's many things. And by the way, I feel like self-care is really important. And we do also teach that in our self or our empowering girls class, which is kind of a extension of myself. So self-care is really important to me. And, um, I love to walk in the woods. That's something to me completely relaxes me and takes away the stress. 
Um, I love art, although I'm not very good at it. I enjoy it. <laughs> so walking through an art museum or, um, you know, just an art sh show in the summer um, just brings me a lot of joy. Obviously, spending time with my children and traveling is also something and also planning the travel is really important and, and fun mm -hmm. for me. So um, I guess I'm a closet travel agent because I really <laughs> like to have my kids experience new experiences all the time. So, yeah. um, but I would say, you know, just taking the time, first of all, and finding something that really helps you relax and find um, balance again is really important. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's the woods and art. <laughs> yeah. And I think you brought up a good point of, um, like you said, you, you're not, you love art and it gives you joy, but like, you're not really that good at it. I think that we yeah. think that the things that we have to do to like fill us up, we have to be good at it or we can't do it, you know, like right. dancing or whatever. Um, so I really love that you shared that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so as a mama, you probably, or I'm hoping that you, well, I'm, I'm guessing you do have a best time management mom hack, and I would love to know what it is. <laughs> well, you know, I, I've been thinking about that, um, and my kids are now teenagers. They're 15 and 16, and something that we've always done when it comes to organization is um, we sit around the dinner table on Sunday nights. We try really hard to have dinner together on Sunday nights mm -hmm. and we just talk about the week ahead and who needs to go where and what the schedule needs to be. Um, and I've also made sure that my kids at an earlier age um, start to take on some of that responsibility themselves that it's up mm -hmm. to them to tell me um, kind of what they need from me mm -hmm. versus me organizing everything because obviously our goal is to um, help them become more independent right. and um, I don't know I kind of feel like at 15 and 16 almost 16 and 17 that they really are taking on those um, responsibilities on their own um, because pretty soon they're going to have to do it in college so yeah. um, and it, it's really just a process you know you just plant the seeds and um, help them understand that it really is up to them eventually. So, um, but I think right now still, you know, talking about it on Sunday night to talk about the week ahead. It also helps me plan dinners. You know, who's going to be home? Who's not going to be home? Um, if my husband has a work meeting or something that, um, that's a night that, you know, one or all of us or some of us go out to dinner. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's kind of been very helpful. Yeah, I like that. Um, yeah, because eventually they're going to be the ones managing their own calendar, so that makes complete sense. Right, right. So it's all about, you know, launching them into the world to be independent. So. Yeah, and I think that is kind of, I feel like that is mirroring exactly what you're doing with these classes as well. So right. giving the other kids the opportunity to learn the same things is really good. Thank you. Yes, I'm really proud of it. It's really been a labor of love. Well, for everybody who's listening, I'm definitely going to be listing Amy Marks' information um, in the show notes. So make sure you go and check that out. You can find the links and all the things there. So that way everybody can check out your resources um, and find her because I obviously I've, I feel like I've, I'm an advocate for this. I feel like it needs to be out there in, in all the schools and especially in, in all of our homes. So Thank you, Amy, for being with us. Thank you for sharing all your tips and um, and all these trainings. I'm so. I mean, I, I think it's amazing. Thank you. I appreciate it. And to all your listeners too, um, I hope everybody and their kids stay safe. And um, with this winter weather, yeah. <laughs> I hope everybody stays safe on the roads as well.